Hey there, what's good? I'm going to go over how to use Adobe Illustrator to create an age chalkboard um, because that's kind of all the rage these days. Um, I'm certainly not good at actually using real chalk, so uh, creating a chalkboard digitally is a little bit more my speed. So here's an example of a Sweet 16 chalkboard, and um, this one's kind of heavy on the words, so I would encourage you to not be quite so heavy on the words, but I included this as an example because of the content. I thought it would help you to find ideas about things you might want to put on yours. Uh, here's another one. This one's got a little bit more embellishments and decoration at the top and so forth. So little squiggles here and there. Um, favorite quote, goals and wishes. So some cool things like that. And then I have this last one here, which is somebody's 30th birthday. And uh, they kind of did some additional little things. And it's kind of funny. As you look through these, you'll see things that, and you're like, oh, there's that font. And like, there's this little two with the, the swishes over it and, and stuff like that. And, and I actually know where those come from. So that's kind of fun as you're getting to, to know these a little bit more. So anyway, the first thing you're going to do, and in this Google document that I've shared to you, I have um, given you a bunch of links. So like, for instance, this first one here is the website where you can get an Adobe Illustrator file that's the Wallstone background. That's actually going to be the document that we're going to open. So you're going to open the Wallstone background in Illustrator. And I'm going to use the older version that, that I've been teaching with, although we're getting the new version. And um, this stuff works much more smoothly in the new version. So for that reason, I am going to go ahead and use the old version just so anyone who might be using the old version can make adaptation. Um, <clears throat> when you open this up, it is going to have a uh, little watermark or whatever here at the bottom. So you're going to want to certainly uh, probably get rid of that as you're going. Oh, yeah, you got to be careful because this whole background is like one big mess. So it's really hard to get a hold of. In the new version of Illustrator, I can get a hold of this really easily. In this version, not as simply. So um, just know it may take a little bit more work to get in there and get a hold of this logo, uh, isolating until you can get to it. Um, so there I have little pieces of it. So once you get to the isolation mode where you're out of the chalkboard, you should then be able to grab a hold of that with the white arrow and press delete and then get back out to the main group. The other issue you're going to have here is most of these age chalkboards are portrait and this is not. So I'm going to go and turn my artboard. You can just click here on the icon. Let's flip it to portrait. Um, however, when you click that and flip it to portrait, if you zoom out, you're going to notice now your picture that's on here is the wrong direction. So we're going to click on the picture object transform and we're going to just rotate that uh, 90 degrees so that it's flipped up on the correct side. So anyway, that's just kind of your basic, let's get that in there. I would also go ahead and um, then lock this layer, call it chalkboard, and give it a lock so you don't mess it up, don't move it around, don't accidentally grab it, that sort of thing. And then make a new layer for the other items that you're going to add. So additional prep work, you're going to want to download some chalkboard vectors, little scribbles and drawings, and you can find fonts that have this. Um, but free vectors, uh, allfreevectors.com has some free chalkboard vectors. So you can see these are like little embellishments and vintage banners and little sketch drawn things. There's the social media design elements. There's a bunch of little ones in here, food. So you can download those. They'll be zip files. So you'll open the zip and then drag the AI, the Adobe Illustrator file out. And what I've done is put all mine in a folder. So all the little doodles that I've got, I put in here. All of the fonts, when I double clicked those uh, and unzipped them, I went ahead and dragged their TTF files in here and then installed the fonts. And, and that way I have the names of the fonts in here so that I don't forget what the names of my fonts are when I get ready to use them. So just some tips there. One other download I give you in the uh, document towards the bottom is the Illustrator brush set from Mel's Brushes. You're going to want to download this, uh, the Natural Sketch Doodle Lines. And again, I already have that in my folder that I've put out on my Google Drive, um, but I also have it into the folder that I'm going to be using today. So uh, make sure you've got all your little pieces in there so that you're ready to roll. And that Mel's Brushes is going to be really handy um, for anything that we might draw. Okay, so once I've done that and I've installed my fonts, uh, we open the chalkboard, we're going to change the orientation and lock it, and then we're ready to start. So um, obviously, like I said, you're going to make sure you know the names of your fonts. Uh, so that you can add them in much more quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my name. My name is Tanya, so I've got that in there. Uh, double click your name and then of course change your color. And you may not see any colors. This does happen a lot of times on here. So you may have to pull up some swatch libraries and pull the pull whatever library you want to use. So you want to probably look ahead of time and decide, you know, what what library will I need? Most of you are probably going to go with pastels. That's pretty common with this particular project. Um, 
There's some color books that you can pull from. Um, you know, they're going to have a whole lot of colors, so you kind of have to decide where you want to go here with this. So, you know, I can pick a Pantone color, and when you do, it'll add it into here. So if I know I'm going to use that color, and then maybe, um, you know, a pale blue, a pale pink, or something, I can go ahead and put those in here. And then they're ready to use. So you can go ahead and do that. Now I can go ahead and start using the colors that I've already pre-selected for my document. So here's my kind of off-white color. Um, then you need your font. And if you're in the newer versions, your fonts show here. In the older versions of Illustrator, we're going to have to come up here to type in font to be able to actually preview the fonts. Good if I could get my mouse to go over there. I'm on a kitchen table. All right, and then whatever you want to use. So I'm going to use Blockography for my name and then uh, make this font pretty big. And you can still take your black arrow tool and resize your font to be however big you want it to be. Now, one of the things that you need to know is that as you're using these things in Illustrator, um, some of your fonts you may wish to create outlines of. Remember, they're not editable once you create outlines, but if you're having trouble like rotating and words disappearing, or if you're using dingbat fonts, like symbol fonts, which is what I'm going to use next, you're probably going to want to create outlines. So now I'm going to create like a little banner thing. Um, so I already know in my folder here that I've got adhesive in R7 banners. I've got some banners that are in here that are in a font. So I need to go to that website and pull up the adhesive in R7 page and then look at the letters so I know which, which letter I need. So I don't waste a bunch of time typing letters. So I'm going to use F, so it's a capital F, and that will create that letter. So I'm just going to go ahead and come in here and click and type in F, capital F, and I can go ahead and make it the color I want. And then I need to set it to my font, that adhesive in our seven banners. And that's going to give me my banner. And then there we go. I got it. So let's say I'm going to put that over here. And um, let's assume I want to put the word food on there. So again, I'm going to zoom up. I'm going to click down here somewhere and put food. Well, notice it's still using that font. So I need to then pick a different font that I'm going to use. Um, and so I can come back and look and say, okay, what fonts did I choose? Oh, Read of Love is my other font. So now I can come back in here and set it to Read of Love. And if you know the name of your font, you can start typing it. And then when it comes up, press Enter. So there we go. Now this one I'm actually going to leave black because I'm going to put it on this little banner. However, I need it to sort of be the shape of the banner. And so I'm going to have to do a little warping here to this one. So that's under Effect. Um, and you may have to do some warping on some of yours. It's okay if you don't know which one to go to. I know that I'm arching this, but if you choose the wrong one, it's not a big deal. You've got the drop down. This is going to be going negative. It's going to be going down. So we're going to go ahead and hit my preview on so I can see it moving. And then we just want it to kind of um, match the, the way it's going. Now, because I haven't created outlines from these, the warp looks funny. So just kind of point your mouse away and use your arrow keys on your keyboard to scoot it up. And that to be kind of the easiest way. And if it's a little big, just, you know, size your font down a smidgen and then use your arrow keys to get it placed like you want. All right. Um, so there we go. There's that. Um, I also probably need to go ahead and put my um, age because this is an age chalkboard. So again, that blockography, about 131 or so is what I used. It doesn't have to be that. I'm 41 years young. So I'll go ahead and pop that in here and um, then I can pick my font size that I want. I'm going to draw a, like, a line or something around that here in just a minute. Let's say I want to put that in the pink color. Um, all right. So, um, and then I'll rotate just a little bit. All right. So next, I'm going to show you how to pull in doodles. So if you've got doodles that are saved, like I do, um, chalkboard food, let's say. Again, I'm using an older version, and these are newer. So getting a hold of these, I'm going to be honest with you, is kind of complicated. It just really is. I'm going to need to use my layers panel and open up my layers and just keep opening them up until I find the ones that have these backgrounds, which is kind of annoying because these backgrounds are in the way when you're trying to grab a hold of these. In the newer versions, you can kind of double click on here and grab a hold of, of the objects. So what I want to do is I don't want to grab a hold of the white box, the green box, or the gray box. I want to be able to grab a hold of my hamburger. So if I lock all of those layers, then I should be able to take my white arrow tool. Well, there's another something I need to probably get rid of. I'll just press delete. You can also, of course, delete stuff if it's in the way. All right. Oh, still something in the way. Press delete. Will I find them all? Okay. 
now let's double click and get inside here. Try to get inside the group. Oh, I must have locked the group that has this in here. Oh yeah, that's the problem. Okay, so now I'm in here and then you can take your white arrow tool and try to draw around your shape. Okay, and I would suggest grouping the shape now before you copy and paste. So control C to copy, go to your document. You may get an error by the way, control V to paste about colors. It's just going to match your color, so it's not a big deal. And then of course you can move this to where you want it to be. Oh, be sure you get off your white arrow tool or you'll be editing paths and that is no good. So black arrow tool, move. And again, if you didn't group it, you better group it before you try to move it or you're going to have all kinds of weird pieces. Now, of course, I'd add other words here too as well. I'm going to go ahead and grab one more little squiggle from here. Uh, let's see, maybe doodle, education, I don't know. Again, all of these are newer files, so it, it sometimes gives me trouble. We just have to work through it. Um, now, these are not white, and since they're not white, you can kind of just delete all these other things, and then it makes it really, really simple to grab a hold of things. So if I want to grab a hold of the book here, um, you can take even your lasso and just kind of lasso around the book. I hope I got all of it. Oops, I got some other stuff too. Let's try that again. Okay. Being zoomed up would be much more beneficial. Okay. And then again, let's go ahead and group. Copy, Control C, Paste, Control V, and accept if you get a color error. Um, and then, of course, make it in one of your colors from your uh, swatches that you have to go along with your design. Okay? All right. So let's say that's going on there somewhere. Now, two more things that I wanted to really take time to show you is um, you can still add, you know, normal shapes in here. Say like an ellipse. Say I want to put a box or a circle or whatever around my number here. Um, I'm going to switch this because I just want the stroke. You can stroke this using a library of the brush. So those Mel's brushes that I talked about. I can go to other library on my brush panel and find my folder that has this in here and um, load up my brushes and it's going to open up a little panel. And these are cool because there's little dot ones and you can create dots to go around your stuff and you can still make them bigger or smaller or whatever. I would say be consistent um, if you make it, you know, small keep it small. If you make them big, keep them big. If you're drawing any straight lines like as separators, be sure to hold shift so that your line is actually straight. And then again, try to match up that stroke size. If I use two on the one, I probably should use two on the rest or whatever. Um, but anyway, so that's kind of some other little tips there with how to deal with um, all of these different little, little uh, things here in Illustrator. So as you're creating your chalkboard, your main things are, of course, just be sure you're organized. Download all of the little icons and sketchy things that you might use. Download your fonts and keep copies of them so you know the names of them. If you're using symbol fonts, then you want to make sure that you pull up those symbol maps so you know what letters, or ahead of time just write down what letters. And then really it's just about getting organized. So, you know, once you get a little bit of this done, I might want to take this top part um, and, and either and group it all so it's one piece. Or I might want to make new layers along the way. So, you know, if all of this stuff is good, let's say I don't want the book on here, so I'll cut it. But let's say all of this and pretend I already have these words. And I might go ahead and just um, deal with that as far as that's a layer, you know, I'll just call it top part or whatever, and then lock it and then continue on um, so that I'm not accidentally picking up and scooting stuff around. Um, and that's just my own personal advice. So good luck to you as you create your age chalkboards. Um, hopefully some of the resources that I provided you will be useful to you. Um, like I said, just get organized and um, have fun. And I look forward to learning more about you at the wonderful age that you are. Thanks.